Hello guys, welcome to a brand new concept I'm going to be doing. It's going to be Elder Scrolls lore, and it's not exactly brand new. I did a five facts on the Great War, uh, but I realized that, and I've been going through YouTube and watching videos and stuff like that, that lore videos I've seen consist of either races, uh, factions, locations, but they're not really events, you know what I mean? So I decided to do lore videos on events and concepts and meanings, things like that, and uh, to start out with, uh, we have the Great War. And the Great War I'm going to be doing because it's sort of familiar before, between uh, Skyrim players because the Great War takes place just about 30 years before the events of Skyrim, I believe. So you get a rough concept of what it is, and a lot of Nords in Skyrim uh, got to fight in the Great War, and so you get to experience some sort of, and the fallout with the Thalmor and the Empire and the Stormclock Rebellion, but we'll get into that, so... We're going to start up with the very beginning and keep going all the way to the very end. So let's go. So the broad view of the Great War is the Tamrielic Empire, under the Mede Dynasty now, found themselves at war with the Third Aldmeri Dominion during the Fourth Era. And now, the year 168 of the Fourth Era, Titus Mede II ascended the throne to a weakened empire. Valenwood and Elliswear were gone, they joined the Aldmeri Dominion, Blackmarsh was out of Imperial hands after the Oblivion Crisis, Morrowind was still devastated by the eruption of the Red Mountain, Hammerfell was in a civil war between the Crowns and the Forebears. Really, times just were not good for the Empire. Of the provinces, only High Rock, Skyrim, and Cyrodo were stable and prosperous. So, to start the, the whole fact, like the whole war, in the year 171 of the Fourth Era, the Aldmeri Dominion sent an ambassador with an ultimatum. He demanded staggering tributes, the dismantlement of the blades, outlaw of Talos worship, and the ceding of a large chunk of Hammerfell to the to the Dominion. Despite warnings from all of his generals the, uh, of the Empire's weakened military, the ultimatum was rejected by the Emperor. There is a gift that was also brought along by the Thalmor ambassador. And he upturned the gift and showed the gift that was in a cart and reeled the severed heads of every single Blades agent in Valenwood and the Somerset Isles. Within days, Hammerfell and Cyrodiil were both invaded at simultaneously. The, cities of Leowin was, uh, the city of Leowin was quickly captured, while Braville was besieged. In Hammerfell, the disunited Red Guards offered little resistance. The southern coastline fell quickly, thus initiating the March of Thirst, where the Imperial forces were forced to cross the Alakir Desert. In year 172 of the Fourth Era, the Thalmor were overconfident, and they believed the Empire was weak. Bravo and Anvil fell in Cyrodiil, and a fierce naval battle erupted in Lake Rumar and along the Neben. The Imperial City was almost surrounded. Gotta turn the page, you know, I got a lot of- I actually have a lot of notes. <laughs> in Hammerfell, the Thalmor halted. Content with their claims, they had already claimed all the land that was of the that was in the ultimatum, except for the city of Higaith. In the year 173 of the Fourth Era, the March of Thirst survivors regrouped for reinforcements from High Rock. Resistance in Cyrodiil also increased as fresh legions from Skyrim bolstered their ranks. However, the Thalmor surrounded the Empire on three sides, with only the route to Bruma open for the Imperial City. Early in one in the four uh, of 173 of the Fourth Era, a, four, a forebear army from the city of Sentinel broke the siege of Higaith, which was a crown city, and created a temporary peace between the two factions, and they still cooperate to this day and uh, into the modern times. At the same time, the Thalmor under Lady Arenula successfully crossed the Alakir Desert. Imperial legions led by General Decinius met them outside Skaven. The battle was bloody, long, and indecisive. Decenius would withdraw, leaving Skaven to the Thalmor, but their army was too weak to advance, and thus the Thalmor stayed in the city. In year 174 of the Fourth Era, the Thalmor committed all their forces to conquer Cyrodiil. During the spring, Aldmeri reinforcements gathered in the southern part of Cyrodiil, and eventually the Thalmor and Cyrodiil, led by Lord Nerefin, commenced the attack on the 12th of the Second Seed. One army aimed to take the north to surround the city, while the main army attacked from all the other sides. 
In a bold move, Titus Mede II chose to fight his way out. This led to the 8th Legion and to fight in a desperate last stand as its rear guard. The remainder of the Imperial forces successfully escaped the city in the north, breaking the Thalmor advances. The Imperial forces linked up with uh, reinforcements from Skyrim under General Jonah. The Imperial city would be sacked, the White Gold Tower would be looted, and innocents would be slaughtered, and the 8th Legion would be destroyed completely. In Hammerfell, General Destinius was preparing to advance south. However, he was recalled back to Cyrodiil. Unwilling to completely abandon Hammerfell, he discharged a significant amount of tr troops to uh, stay and fight. These veterans formed the core of the Hammerfell resistance, and they successfully forced Lady Elenia's Ar forces back across the Alakir Desert. Continuous raids from the Alakir warriors forced the Thalmor to take heavy losses. In the winter of 174 to 175 of the Fourth Era, the Thalmor believed that the war was all but over, and they consent. They sent continuous envoys to make peace with the Emperor. However, Titus Mede II made a very clever move and fooled the Thalmor by encouraging peace while he regrouped his forces for the final battle. The Battle of the Red Ring began as Titus Mede II split his army into three forces. General Decenius led one army that was hidden among the Clovian highlands near Chorl. The second army was led by General Jonah near Chedinal. The third was commanded by the forgotten hero wearing the Emperor's armor. On the 30th of Rain's hand, General Decenius swept down the on the Imperial City from the west, while General Jonah pushed south along the Red Ring Road. In a two-day battle, General Jonah pushed west, forcing bitter resistance, facing bitter resistance as the Thalmor forces counterattacked from Bravil and Skingran. On the fifth day, the Imperial, Imperial Army surrounded the em Imperial City. Titus Mede II then led an assault from the north, personally capturing Lord Naurfin. An attempt was made to retreat, but General Jonah's hardened legions halted them and the entire Aldmeri army was destroyed. Lord Naurfin's body was then hanged from the White Gold Tower. The White Gold Concordat was signed in the year 175 of the Fourth Era and officially ended the war. The treaty allowed the Dominion to keep their claims in Hammerfell, which led to a separate, continuous war between the Thalmor and the Red Guards. As a result, Hammerfell was renounced by the Emperor. The Red Guards would eventually sign their own treaty with the, with the Thalmor, which forced the complete withdrawal of Thalmor forces from Hammerfell. Under the White Gold Concordat as well, Talos worship was outlawed, which would lead to a civil war to break out in Skyrim. Although the war was over, it should be noted that both the Empire and Dominion believe another war would soon break out. Alright, <laughs> so this is, it's only been about eight minutes, right? And that was about two hours, two and a half hours worth of research I did. I had a lot of fun doing this research. I learned a lot go, just going back and reading all this kind of stuff, and it was a lot of fun. And expect this to come out on Tuesdays which will be the day this comes out uh, it'll be replacing my Skyrim uh, survival mode video series which obviously wasn't popular and didn't do much at all <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah the, these these are fun to make and I plan on doing it the original idea was that I was gonna actually start with the Septim Dynasty uh, but I ended up doing this and this is a bit more familiar for people to kind of start out with because this is more of something that you get the experience in a sense because you get to see veterans in the actual Skyrim series of this. So expect that. Expect the Septim Dynasty next ex ne next episode a week from today. So I had a lot of fun doing this. I got about 60 minutes. I got about hours worth of footage of video so I can do these concepts, and I'm really excited to keep doing them. This is uh, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, so expect the next video to be on the Septim Dynasty. It's going to be all the way from Tiber Septim up to Martin Septim. It's roughly like 430 years of of rulers, and a lot of a lot of crap happened. Like I learned a lot about who ruled and who, like how what went on and everything. It's really interesting though, and I hope you guys enjoyed. And as I stated earlier, I want to stay clear away from more of the more popular things. Like a big popular thing for Skyrim lore is like. Uh, doing races like uh, Khajiits, Argonians, things like that. And I want to kind of stay clear from that. I want to do something more like concepts, factions, events, things that's happened in, in the Elder Scrolls lore that doesn't get really the, uh, the attention 
that you know you might you might want to know more about because that is why I started with the Great War. It's more familiar, and I wanted to go into more deeper concepts that aren't as explored in videos so i plan on doing more like that and i hope you guys enjoyed this if you have any recommendations of what i should do please let me know in the comments i'm more than glad to do research about it i gotta see you know if there's actually research about it then i gotta see how much digging i can do you know i want to make a concept of a video that's you know not just you know, a minute or two long i might do that if it comes down to it, if it's really really interesting like uh something that is truly fascinating and world changing that happens and it takes roughly like two minutes to make then i'll do it and even then, it's a maybe. But yeah, I mean, this is something that was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys around. Peace.